welcome to In the Studio. My name is Stephen Streeter. I'm the host today for this episode. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the rebirth of the State Theater. And we have two guests today, David Wilkinson to my far right and um, Jeff Levitch. David, let's start with you. If you could tell us about the history of the theater and you're a historian. You must have taken quite an interest in doing this uh, project. Yeah, Steve, I guess my interest in the State Theater goes back to probably around 2005, I'm, I'm thinking. Um, actually, probably a little bit earlier than that. In 2003, I'd published a book uh, by the Yolo County Historical Society called Crafting a Valley Jewel, uh, The Architects and Builders of Woodland. And it was during this book project that um, I came across historical photos of the State Theater. And I did a profile on the architect, uh, William B. David. And I came across historic photos taken by Paul W. Hollingshead uh, around the time the theater had, had opened in 1937. And these beautiful photos had uh, showed what the theater looked like, of course, which was entirely different than what it looked like in 2005. The beautiful marquee and tower had been stripped off of it in the 60s uh, when the main street was wide. And so I, I became aware of it then. And then um, I, over time, I kind of became obsessed with, gee, wouldn't it be wonderful for the community to restore that facade and marquee? It would be a beacon on Main Street. So that kind of led me into uh, the second book project, uh, again, published by the Yolo County Historical Society, Hollywood Comes to Woodland. And I collaborated with uh, Paul Hollingshead's son, Bill Hollingshead, uh, who grew up in Woodland. Um, and Bill and I collaborated. There's lots of historic photos in that particular book uh, of the State Theater. The impetus there was to inspire the community to restore the State Theater by delving back into all the uh, amazing theater history in Woodland, going back over a century to the earliest days of cinema with the Nickelodeon. So that's really how all this got started. Well, there was an effort by people that wanted to preserve the theater. I believe in 2005 or so, the wrecking ball was imminent. And some local folks like you came forward and said, let's keep the theater. And, and the Woodland Opera House was on the table at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the State Theater in 2005 was still operating, barely. Um, it was being leased out to a gentleman who uh, did a wonderful job operating it uh, with three screens, which was a very tough thing to do. The, the State Theater had been multiplexed in the 70s by the owner, Richard Mann. Um, but the main auditorium had never been broken up, which was really crucial. Um, so it, the State Theater ran continuously from 1937 all the way to 2010. So I actually started talking up restoring the marquee and the facade with the, with the theater operator. Of course, that was an expensive proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, the owner of the building, Richard Mann, who Jeff and I actually dedicated the film to, um, you know, Richard was older. He, he really didn't want to put a lot of money into the building. He was very open to saving the building yeah. if a new owner would come along and take it off his hands, so to speak. Mm. Jeff, let's give you some time to sure. tell us about the documentary filmmaking process and all the interviews and oh, yeah. pictures well, you sorted through. We, we interviewed around 15 or 16 people, um, the well, woodland politicians from the city council, um, um, Richard Mann, and, um, who was the, the owner of the theater. Um, Dave Corkle, who from Cinema West, uh, was the new developer of the for the theater, and 
and as well as um, people that attended the theater back in the day mm -hmm. and worked in the theater. So it was quite interesting, a, a broad scope of, of, of interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, the process was to take their stories and weave our own story together from the interviews. Mm -hmm. And it was a very in timely, intense process. Mm -hmm. And there was so much good information, so much, so many stories. Each interview could be its own separate story. But we, we took these pieces, and we, we call them sound bites, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and weave the story. And then we're able to um, go back and, and get visuals to, com mm -hmm. to complement what's being said on the screen. It was, it was a great, great project, mm -hmm. fun to do. And I understand there will be an opportunity to to uh, Davis Media Access will be allowed to see it. And yes, yeah, we provided a copy for great. them for you to, to yeah, view. Yeah, be wonderful. David, we have some pictures. Maybe you'd like to walk us through those and tell what uh, the a little about the history of the theater going back to 1937. Much different than it than it was now. And later we have one of the the renderings what it looks like currently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the interesting things about the State Theater is uh, we had probably almost 20 theaters downtown that preceded the State Theater, going back all the way to around 1908. The State Theater was the first movie theater in downtown Woodland that was built from scratch. All the other movie theaters or Nickelodeons had been remodeled historic buildings. But the State Theater uh, was developed by Redwood, the Redwood Theater Group, who were headquartered up in Eureka, California, along the Redwood Highway. And they were working with a talented architect at the time, uh, William B. David. David, interestingly, had uh, worked for William Randolph Hearst, designing uh, movie sets, uh, decorating um, his mansion in San Simeon. And in fact, Bill David produced probably a dozen B-movies in Hollywood. He was a real dashing figure, um, drove sports cars, um, et cetera. So he designed a really uh, beautiful theater uh, for a small town. It was done in the um, um, style of the day, which was a streamlined modern with kind of aerodynamic banding around the facade. The, uh, the auditorium uh, was quite large. It seated uh, almost 1,000 people. Uh, decorative lighting um, and stadium seating, what we call stadium seating today. So a very functional um, auditorium. And, uh, you know, lots of generations of uh, Woodlanders and people throughout the Ola County would come to this mm. theater. Uh, the Varsity Theater in Davis, uh, also designed by William B. David, came uh, much later in the, in the late 40s. Mm -hmm. And it was an entirely different type of uh, more modern uh, architecture. Now, the ushers then dress differently than they do now. You've got uh, some pictures I can put up in a moment to yeah, the usher, the ushers, uh, usherettes, uh, a classic uh, photo. All these photos were, were so fortunate that uh, um, Paul Hollingshead, a uh, highly skilled photographer who trained, uh, who trained at the New York Institute of Photography, um, had his studio in Woodland. Mm. And he documented the State Theater for the owners at the time. These photos of the usherettes are really beautiful. I believe they were taken in his studio in downtown Woodland. His son Paul, his son Bill, excuse me, uh, in the movie remarked that, uh, gee, they looked like band uniforms with the brass <laughs> buttons. And I, I think that's so, I, I think that's just a really uh, right on statement. They're really uh, handsome uh, mm -hmm. uniforms. And we interview, as Jeff said, we. We interviewed some of the women who actually worked at the State Theater uh, during that era, which yeah. was, they had a lot of good stories in the movie. Yeah. I remember when I saw the documentary at the Woodland Senior Center at the end of August, some of them were there and yeah. told some yeah. stories yeah. from those days. Uh-huh, right. 
I believe there was one guy that ran the projector even that was present. Yeah, some of those employees worked at the theater for many years. Uh, um, I know the manager and kind of the person who was the projectionist, they, they worked at the State Theater for quite a while, so they're fondly remembered uh, in Woodland. Well, the technology has certainly changed since then. They're not <laughs> using the old style movie projectors. It's all digital these days. C could you tell briefly, since we don't have the architect, some of the challenges in restoring the theater? Yeah, in the, Jeff can touch on this. We, um, uh, we interviewed uh, James Howard extensively, as you'll see in the film. James works for Cinema West. He's an architect, really uh, talented interior oh, yeah. designer. So, Jeff, you can talk about that. But we did a couple walkthroughs with James mm -hmm. uh, during the whole restoration. He, he was very meticulous about uh, restoring some of the historic detail. Yeah. And they, um, he, um, he showed us around. Mm -hmm. uh, well, for me, what was really fun about going through the state, the state theater and, and watching it grow to what it is today was um, to see the stages mm -hmm. of, of, of the, of the um, construction. But uh, in the very beginning, when, it, when the theater was gutted out, we did a walkthrough and uh, James Howard showed us all the old um, letters from the, the old marquee. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot, um, the um, light fixtures, uh, things that they were um, um, go going to renovate and bring back to life to be included in the, in the theater. Mm -hmm. um, when they took down the screen, the, the movie screen, they found a half-painted image, images of a couple on the stage above the screen. And mm -hmm. from that, they, they ended up um, following the lines and and recreated that image, the, that painting uh, above the screen, and it's there today. The same thing with the um, very ornate ceiling in the State Theater, and that had been painted over back, I think, in the 60s, mm -hmm. like a, a layer of white paint, mm -hmm. and luckily, over time, that paint faded, and they were able to see the the outline of the this beautiful mural or ceiling mural um, that they were able to uh, again follow the lines and 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 recreate that and and finding the colors from mm. that were used then as well so they could uh, keep it as a as original as possible. One funny thing I remember from the tour is that the screen at, at that time had thousands of holes in them and the projectionists would go down and stand behind it and watch the audience and their reaction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Walter Klenhard, who grew up in Woodland, his father Dick was the longtime uh, director of the Woodland Chamber of Commerce. Walter worked there, I think, in the 60s or 70s, and he had that story <coughs> of sitting behind the screen where he could see the audience, mm -hmm. but they couldn't see him. Mm -hmm. Walter uh, went on to mm -hmm. successful career in, in Hollywood, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, directing, directing movies and act, acting in some movies. Uh. Right. As we're wrapping up, maybe we could see what the theater looks like now. There's a, a rendering that was in the Enterprise that mm -hmm. we found, and uh -huh. so uh, it shows the outside with the marquee restored. I guess Caltrans is responsible for having it taken away earlier. Now yeah. it's back where it belongs. Mm -hmm. I, I understand from uh, Ken Hyatt and others that there were some challenges with the. Palm trees. Not everybody was fond of those palm trees, but they've come to accept them, and th th that's well, good. Yeah. There's a, yeah, that was uh, in our interviews. We asked several people about what their feelings were about the palm trees, and we got some real heavy responses. Like, what are they doing with palm trees? We're all we should have almond trees, and uh, but you know. Palm trees and Hollywood and th movies, they all go together. I, I, I like the palm trees. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the story, there's so many stories within the movie, stories within the story. So Jeff yeah. and I broke it down into like a dozen vignettes within the movie, and one of them was, you know, the, the great palm tree controversy. So it is fun to see all the wide ranging opinions about yeah. palm trees. But, uh, yeah, when the crane showed up this last summer to deliver the new recreated 
a neon tower, LED tower, mm -hmm. and marquee. It was, it was very emotional for people that um, had lived in Woodland long enough to remember when it was taken down in the 60s. And of course, we'd only seen it in the Hollingshead mm -hmm. photographs. Yeah. But James Howard was very meticulous about recreating it to look mm -hmm. almost exactly the same as it did in the 30s using mm -hmm. those uh, historic photographs. So that, that was quite amazing when that happened. We could talk for a long time, but we need to r wrap it up for today and maybe we'll do a sequel. You, you have a lot more to say, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, very good. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you. And thank you both uh, David Wilkinson and Jeff Levitch for being here today. And that will conclude our In the Studio episode for today.